please begin, my dear. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming to my dissertation uh, from my living room. So here is uh, the outline of my presentation, and I will go through these one by one. I will be happy to answer any questions if you had any at the end. So creativity has reportedly been, uh, you know, listed as one of the most important skills for success in life in the 21st century. And this is one of those lists from the World Economic Forum. And the reason for that is possibly because we are facing new challenges and new problems, and we need creative solutions from creative individuals. Consider the current pandemic that we are all uh, in. We need creativity in schools to keep teaching and learning going. We need creativity to have our businesses open. And we need creativity for the vaccine that we are all waiting for. So we have to improve creativity of our people. One of the means that we can use to improve creativity and assess creativity first, then improve it, is uh, through video games. And the reason for that, among other reasons, uh, are listed here. Video games are popular. They're internally motivating. Mistakes are welcomed in video games and video games can facilitate the state of flow, which means ultimate engagement in the task at hand. And research shows that flow can, uh, experiencing flow can improve people's creativity. So I propose to use a video game called Physics Playground designed and developed here with Dr. Shute's lab uh, in the past 10 years. I specifically used the level editor of this game where students can create their game levels. And I designed and de developed uh, uh, creativity support systems into that level editor. And I wanted students to use that, those supports to improve the creativity of their game levels. Here's one example. And before I talk about the example, uh, I should mention that uh, the, the goal of this game is simple. Hitting a red balloon with a green ball by drawing objects on the screen. And uh, this, this level is called Jump, is not that creative. A similar game level on the right called Invisible Chef is creative. My goal in my study was to help students create more game levels like the Invisible Chef. And through the process of creating such levels, uh, I hoped that students could improve their creativity, both inside the game design process and outside on the external measures. So what is creativity after all? Uh, one of the most agreed upon definitions uh, of creativity is that any ideas or product that is both novel and appropriate is creative. There are other aspects for a creative product out there in the literature, for example, aesthetics, high quality, and element of surprise that uh, researchers talked about. To assess creativity, uh, uh, researchers uh, researchers used divergent thinking as a proxy for creativity, which includes fluency, the number of ideas that someone can, can come up with, flexibility, the categories, the number of categories that those ideas can fit in, and originality, the rareness or unusualness of the ideas statistically compared to the rest of the ideas from a particular group, and elaboration, the details of the, those ideas. Looking at the literature of video games and creativity, uh, in the correlational now, uh, studies, we see mixed results. Those studies simply asked people, how many times during a week or month do you play video games? And then they took uh, some creativity tests like the Torrance test of creativity, one of the most famous ones, and conducted some correlations between those two. Some studies found negative correlations, some studies found no correlations, and some studies found positive correlations. And the problem with those studies is that they put all types of video games into the mix and do the correlational analyses. But uh, in the experimental and quasi-experimental studies, we see some positive results. And these studies pick those video games that have more potential for improving people's creativity, like these three examples that I show here. Uh, and uh, they compare these video games with other types of video games, like shooting games and racing games and they see positive results there. And uh, there is a gap in these studies and my study is, going to, is trying to address that gap. And that gap is that there is no clear support for creativity in place in these video games. But generally in other contexts, when it comes to improving creativity, we have three schools of thought. 
researchers think that uh, in the inspirationism school of thought, they think that if you uh, inspire people, they can improve their creativity. And uh, in, uh, in researchers in the structurism school of thought think that if people uh, follow some steps in an orderly manner, they can improve their creativity. And people, researchers in situationism suggest that if people uh, play and work in groups and send and receive feedback to and from each other, uh, they can improve their creativity. In my study, I'm focusing on the, sec the first and the second school of thought. Uh, and I designed and developed my creativity support systems using those two schools. Schneiderman, one of the uh, predominant researchers in this field, uh, suggests that we can be pragmatic. We can use uh, you know, supports from uh, more than, uh, I mean, two of these or all the three uh, you know, schools of thought and create support systems based on those schools of thought. So as I mentioned earlier, I used the level editor of Physics Playground. Uh, you can see a screenshot of uh, the level editor here. Uh, a simple environment with tools for students to create their game levels. They can start from scratch from nothing on the screen, only the ball and the balloon. They can grab the ball and the balloon, place them somewhere in this, on the screen and draw objects or obstacles between them. They can make the objects dynamic or uh, static and they can change the background if they want to. I created four versions of the level editor and provided to each condition in my study. The research design of my study is an experimental random assignment, pretest, post-test. I counterbalanced two isomorphic forms, meaning that half of the students in each condition received form A on the pretest, and the rest of the students uh, received form B on the pretest. And on the post-test, they received the other form that they did not receive on the pretest. So the supports in the inspirational condition are as follows. First, the students went through a 10 minute exploration of the website that I created with 30 existing game levels, categorized into low, medium, and high in terms of creativity. Students could compare those categories and aim for uh, you know, highly creative game levels and avoid to create low creative game, game levels. They could see an image, they could see a video of the uh, game levels, and they could see the uh, breakdown of the scores of the game levels in terms of creativity. Then students spent ten, uh, five minutes after the first 10 minutes focused on this spreadsheet, a simple Google spreadsheet with the four rules for brainstorming. And they were told to come up with as many ideas as they could hear. And then finally rate their ideas from one to five, from not creative at all to very creative. That could help them to start from the ones that they could, uh, they thought that uh, going to be uh, very creative. Finally, before starting designing their game levels, students could see this pop-up menu with six random words, interdomain, three interdomain words, and three intradomain words. And uh, the interdomain words uh, are things that are not related to physics, like cat in this example, and intradomain words are related to physics, like energy. All students had to do here was to read these words, try to make a connection between two or more than two words, and then move on. Or they could use these words or their connection in, the, in, the, uh, in their game levels. Research shows that if you make connection between two remotely associated words, the idea coming out of that connection could be an original idea. Students in the instructional conditions uh, followed, first of all, they didn't receive the inspirational supports and they followed these three steps. First, they created as many levels as possible without paying attention to details. They just laid the foundation of their game levels. Then they chose four of those game levels and then they used a tool called Scamper to enhance their four game levels. Scamper stands for Substitute, Combine, Adapt, and you can see the rest. Um, they had a button in the level editor called Scamper. They could click on, at, on that and they could see this pop-up menu that you see uh, below. And by clicking on any of these buttons on any order that they wanted, they could see some instructions suggesting some, uh, I mean, providing some questions for students uh, to uh, you know, think about ideas, how they can improve their game levels. And the idea of a Scamper is that uh, instead of students sitting and thinking about ideas, we try to bring ideas to their minds by idea-sporing questions. 
The both condition received both inspirational and instructional supports, as I talked about before, and they followed those three, six steps that you can see here. And finally, no support condition, only used the level editor without any creativity supports, and then uh, they created their game levels. All of the conditions, students in all of the conditions were told to create as many levels as possible. Be creative and create as many levels as possible. All the conditions received the rubric for, uh, that was used for judging their game levels at the end. So everyone knew how their game levels are gonna be judged at the end. 114 students from FSU, undergraduate and graduate students participated in the study. And you can see the demographics here. They were compensated, those who completed this study with a $10 e-gift card. And some also were compensated with the two research credits. And finally, the four most creative students received an extra $25 e-gift card. Here is the procedure of my study after 67 Zoom sessions and about 250 hours, the data was collected. And here, I just want to bring your attention to that 120 minutes. All the students in the conditions had 120 minutes focused on their game design. And the rest of the time, which was in general, the study took like about three hours, was about, uh, about the pretest, post-test, and tutorial. The external measures that I used in my study were both figural and verbal. For the figural, I had two items perform and students had to draw some responses. And I will show you one example in a minute. For the verbal, students had to come up with different uses for a common object, for example, a bucket or a pen. And uh, for the figural, they had eight minutes. For the verbal, they had six minutes to complete. I scored all of these uh, uh, like uh, the figural and verbal items for fluency, originality, flexibility, and elaboration. And I used the standardized scores of those facets for creating, uh, computing one overall uh, creativity score. I can talk about this more at the end if you want without hinting or something like that. Here are uh, two examples of the items that I used for the figural test. On the left, students had to turn the circles into something. On the right, they had to only use those three shapes to create anything that they could think of. Here is an example of students' responses. Yes, students drew this, took a picture, and sent them to me via email. The in-game measures of creativity. First of all, I wanted to see how many game levels they could create in these conditions. So I just counted the number of game levels objectively, and I just put them in the database. Uh, then, uh, uh, I have to tell you that I asked all the students in each condition at the end of the game design session to choose four most creative levels themselves, the, the levels that they thought uh, are the most creative ones. Then I used a rubric and I had uh, two expert uh, tra uh, trained raters to rate each level, those four uh, creative levels, for these aspects like relevance, whether or not the level was solvable, elaboration, originality, aesthetics, surprise, or humor, and the title's creativity. The inter-rater reliability of the two raters was good, 0.94 for the two raters. And finally, when uh, everything was done, I asked students three open-ended questions about how they felt during the game design, about how they felt about the time, and finally, whether or not they lost track of time during the game design. And I, uh, I had two raters again, to rate their responses using the codes that you see in this table. Uh, and finally, the two raters met and resolved their disagreements. For example, for the feelings, I co uh, we coded for negative feelings, mixed feelings, and positive feelings. Research questions. The first research question that I had was to whether or not the in-game measure of creativity was valid. And my hypo hypotheses are listed here. The, the in-game measure of creativity uh, will have uh, construct and convergent validity. The second research question, which was the main research question of my study, uh, was that whether or not the, effective, the, the, the creativity supports were effective. The first hypothesis was that, uh, that the creativity supports will be effective in general, and the order in which they will be effective will be the both first, then inspirational, then instructional, and then the no support condition. So results. To address the first research question's first hypothesis, uh, I conducted a factor analysis, exploratory factor analysis, and results showed that those facets in the in-game measure of creativity 
generated only one factor. They loaded uh, only one on one factor, accounting for about 70% of the variance. And you can see their loadings in the table. For the convergent validity, I used the external measure, which was more relevant to the game design process, the figural tests, uh, pre-test and post-test, and I conducted uh, correlation analyses. And you see that the correlation analyses were significant at 0.24 and 0.23 on the pretest and the post-test. And finally, the measure was also reliable with a corn box alpha of 0.92, which was good. To address the research question two, I conducted ANCOVAS using the appropriate uh, uh, dependent variable for the uh, external measures and appropriate uh, uh, you know, uh, covariate. Here in this case, you're looking at the figural test overall creativity and the uh, figural test overall creativity on the pretest was used for the covariate. We can see that the both condition raised above the rest of the conditions, uh, but the rest of the conditions were kind of similar yet the uh, ANCOVA did not show significant difference amongst the, three, the four groups. But breaking it down into the four facets, we again see a similar pattern with the both condition being the best, uh, raising above the rest of the conditions, except for elaboration, which I can talk about that later. And uh, the only ANCOVA, the only significant ANCOVA result was from the flexibility, as you can see there. And looking at the post hoc analyses, we see that the both condition did better for flexibility compared to the no support condition, the, ins uh, the inspirational condition, and the instructional condition with those effect sizes. And also the post hoc analyses for the fluency, we see that the both condition did better for, uh, compared to the no support condition, the inspirational condition, and for the originality, also the same thing happened. Comparison between the both condition and inspirational condition yielded uh, significant differences between the two groups. For the verbal test, again, ANCOVA was conducted. And again, we see the both condition raising above the rest of the conditions, but not significantly the difference, the overall difference amongst the four groups. Breaking it down into the four facets, we see again the similar pattern with the, with the both condition raising above the rest of the conditions. But again, you see the elaboration being that all the conditions are uh, the same. And mind you that you see the error bars are too large and that could be the, the, the reason, that is the reason for non-significant findings. But when looking at the uh, condition by condition comparison, we see that the both condition did better here than the inspirational condition and the instructional condition for fluency. And in originality, we see that the both condition did better than the instructional and then than the instructional for flexibility as well. So in general, it is very hard to make an impact on the external measures of creativity in, four, in just two hours. But seeing these patterns of the both condition doing better is promising. And we saw that for the flexibility, we also found significant difference with the both condition being the best. Before I jump into the in-game measures of creativity, these are four examples of the levels that the students created. The one at the top, the, the two at the top are uh, more creative. The maximum score could be 13, and the two at the bottom are not that creative. So those four creative game levels. The ENCOVA showed that there is a significant condition effect, showing that the conditions were different in terms of the creativity of those four game levels. And the post hoc analyses showed that the both condition did better than the no support condition and the instructional condition with large effect sizes. And the same pattern holds here with the inspirational condition and the instructional uh, comparison between the inspirational and instructional and the no support condition. These effect sizes are much larger, are larger than the both condition. But looking at the overall graph here, I can tell you that most of the creativity in the levels for the both condition come from the inspirational supports, not instructional supports. And another thing that I can take away from this graph is that the inspirational and the both condition were the same statistically in terms of creativity after game levels, and then instructional and the no support condition were the same statistically. And uh, another thing that I can mention here that the instructional supports were effective for the both condition, but not in this graph. They were effective in the number of game levels that the both condition created. So the overall ANCOVA comparison uh, among the number of game levels that can, uh, students came up with in each condition shows an effect, uh, uh, you know, significant effect here. And the post hoc analyses show uh, that uh, the, the uh, 
instructional condition and the no support condition significantly created more number of game levels compared to the inspirational condition. And the difference between the inspirational condition and the both condition approached significance at a p-value of 0.06. And one other thing here is that the both condition could compete with the instructional condition and the no support condition in terms of the number of game levels, whereas the inspirational condition could not compete with those conditions. So in general, the both condition did better in terms of both quality and quantity, which is uh, something I can talk about in discussion in more detail. Looking at the three open-ended questions, we see that students reported, uh, you know, similarly in terms of how they felt during the game design process with the majority of the students, uh, you know, reporting mixed feelings, sometimes positive, sometimes negative. And it's noteworthy to talk about the, that the, uh, the no support condition reported more negative uh, feelings compared to the rest of the conditions. But the chi-square was not significant, saying that the conditions were kind of similar. Uh, for the other question about how, was, uh, how they felt about the time, we see that the majority of the students thought that the time was enough for them. And especially for the no support condition, they had like 90% of the students in, the, in that condition said the time was enough for them. And you see some mixed results, uh, mixed uh, you know, responses in the instructional uh, condition and the both condition, uh, which is not that surprising because those conditions had to do more in terms of like dividing their times into three things and going different steps. Whereas the inspirational and the no support condition had more free time on working on their uh, game levels. And finally, uh, an interesting finding here uh, is, is the responses of students in terms of whether or not they lost track of time. So we see a similar pattern compared to the uh, creativity of the students into uh, when they created those four game levels. You see the inspirational condition and the both condition uh, pr provided almost identical response to this question. 70% and 71% of the students in these two conditions mentioned that they achieved state of flow. And we have a similar response to this question from the instructional and the no support condition. So going back to the research questions, my both hypotheses for the first research question uh, are uh, confirmed, especially for the first uh, one. Uh, there was a question about aesthetics and humor and surprise being a part of the creativity assessment. And the results of this analysis provide some evidence for these two to be included. And we previously, for the second hypothesis, we, uh, Dr. Shud and I conducted another study. We used uh, uh, the rubric that I use in this study, but I modified it a little bit. We found significant correlations between the uh, in-game measure of creativity and the external measures of creativity. We see some slight improvements in this study, and this improvement could be even uh, improved more uh, in some pure uh, validation studies, not an experimental study like this. For the second research question, the hypotheses are partially supported. First of all, not all the supports that I provided uh, showed uh, you know, improvement of superiority compared to the no support condition. In fact, I found that providing only one type of support could be equal to no supports. And the order in which the conditions showed effectiveness was not as I expected it to be. So we saw for the external measures, the both being the best and the rest being the same. And for the in-game measures of creativity, we saw the both to be the best and then inspirational and then instructional and no support being literally come somehow the same. And why the both condition did better? These are the four, five reasons that I think uh, helped them. First of all, they saw those example levels and they understand, understood what is possible. They, they were familiar with the possibilities and then they could go beyond those possibilities. Research shows that if you want to be creative, you should know what has been done before to go beyond it. Then uh, the instructional supports that they received help them to reduce their cognitive load, which is detrimental to creativity if it's too much. And then they had more opportunities for practicing their creativity uh, you know, skills. Uh, and uh, as they made progress through the list of the game levels that they wrote in their brainstorming spreadsheet, they felt good. And research shows that making progress in meaningful work can affect uh, you know, the affective state of students positively and in turn their creativity. And finally, we saw that 70% of the students in this condition reported that they uh, achieved the state of flow. And we know that being in the state of flow can induce more creativity. There were some limitations in my study. I started my study 
uh, right when the lockdowns and everything w- uh, were happening during the pandemic, I changed the duration of my study from six hours to three hours. Uh, the t- test items from four items to two items and the administration of my study from face-to-face to remote. And those things can, uh, you know, created some issues with some technical issues with internet connections and so on. So all of those collectively could, you know, produce some noise in my data and uh, some maybe the reason for those non-significant differences on the external measures. In the future, replication studies without those limitations using other games in other contexts with longer duration and larger sample sizes could be done and uh, could provide more evidence for what I found in this study. And also an interesting line of research could be using the best support that I found in this study uh, in an environment based on the situationism school of thought, which could be an online community where students can share their games, send and receive ideas from and to each other and uh, improve their creativity could be an interesting line of research. And finally, with that, I thank you for listening to my study on a historic day. Uh, I hope I didn't waste your, waste your time. And finally, I leave you with a quote from my friend, Albert. I'm done. How did I do with the time now? 26 minutes, 30 courses. Oh my God, this is good. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>